I was almost 18 years old, you know, and, and I would do most anything they say. Not everything, but most things. They say jump, that's how high you want me to jump. <laughs> so anyway, I you went know, on board that ship, and uh, first thing, when they took me in a, a truck down to New York, you know, pulled up in Brooklyn Navy Yard aboard that, and I seen that big ship sitting there, and I asked uh, the truck driver, I said, what the hell is this thing? He said, that's your new home. <laughs> <laughs> this scared me to death, you know. I never see anything. Guns everywhere. <laughs> From machine guns to big guns, you know, and I thought, man, look at this. So anyway, I just say eighteen years old, which is what's just not too old, you know, to be doing something like that. <laughs> and so then uh, I got on board there where I, uh, they always put the new people in the worst part of the ship. They don't give you choice. You take what's left. So what was left was down in the very villages where they put all of the ammunition, all of the shells and the powder and everything that that's subject to being blown up. And it's just it's just like that. It might blow the whole thing up. You know? So you have to go through from the top. You go through one layer, and they lock. They put put the big door down, lock that. Then you go through the, the next layer down into there, and they, they close that thing and lock it up. You're locked in. There's no way out. And so every night you go down there for general quarters. They call it general quarters. You go down there every night. You go down there every morning. And then when you get the submarines after you, then you go down there. No, no, that no different what it is. You say, you know? <laughs> and when you get down there, of course, there's there's some lights and everything. You look around and there there was a fellow named Goodness. He was the man in charge. He wore the earphone and he listened, he knew what was going on and we was, we were all sitting there ready to, to send the ammunition up, you know, the big shells of the powder. There's a black guy over there, cared as much as I wanted or more. And then there's another guy over here, he was kind of a uh, fellow that had no business in there. But he was there. There we were. And uh, there were four of us down there. Every time we go down there, why well, we'd have uh, if we was trying to sink a submarine, with well, them death charges when they go off, it just sink, you know, it just shakes the ship like that, and you don't know. This guy knew what was going on with the, with the earphones, but we didn't. We thought we would hit, you know, and then if it's shaking hard enough, the lights go out. You see nothing. It's dead. <laughs> Here I'm sitting down there going, oh, oh crying, no way out, thinking we were going to go down to the bottom of the ocean, suffocate. And then this guy, this brutalist, he says, he says, I'm going to tell you guys right now. Says, if we do get hit, he says, if you think I'm going to go down to the bottom of this ocean and sit down there until we suffocate, you're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> reached over and got a hammer, and one of them kind, you know, that you knock the sides of them uh, the powder, powder kegs on, do <laughs> like that, and I, he says, see that? He says, see that can of powder? <laughs> he says, I'm going to take that can of <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to blow him to hell. I was scared to death. You go from white to black. I was about, yeah. You know. And I told him, I said, well, you know, maybe it, uh, you think we're hitting or not. He said, no, he said, I ain't going to take no chances. You don't have to worry about it. I'm going to do it. Hit that guy. That is it. We don't have no worries. And I thought, you know, he's a nut. He'd do it. <laughs> and that was three or four times a day we'd have to go down in that thing. I went on for three months. Three months to that. And uh, so <laughs> it's funny, but it wasn't then, I'm telling you, I was scared to death. And after we made that trip, you know, I got back and I made it safe. And you look on the chart to see where you're going to make your next three months. You go do it again, you see. And my name was on it again. So I called the big shot up on the um, head of the gunnery. Uh, uh, Can we talk? And I, <laughs> I said, see, said uh, I noticed on this new chart that you got me down to build this again. And he said, well, let me check it. So he went and gone a minute or so. And he got back on the phone and said that, yeah, he says, uh, that's right, that's where you're scheduled. I said, well, I don't think that's right. 
spent three three months down in that thing, and I said, you know, that's the worst place you can possibly be. And he said, well, he said, I'll see you. And he said, you're probably right. I'll get you out of there. So a, uh, in a couple of days, I seen the thing had been changed, and they put me right on top of the ship, right way up there by the radio with the machine gun. I was a damn machine gun in that, see. And that was in the North Atlantic, where it must have been 50 below zero. <laughs> At the time this hit, hit, the spray would come up, and it would freeze, and it'd hit you. You'd, you'd be a frozen turd. <laughs> and so that's the way that went, and that was three months of that. So the guy that <clears throat> was up there with me was a fellow by the name of Hunter. His name was Hunter, and him and I, was we first set up there with this clothes and things on, and we like to froze to death. He had to set up there four hours. And so he got a poncho, and we'd get in under there, and he'd cover, cover us both up, and we'd sit there up next to each other, okay. just like that, for four hours, to keep them freezing to death, you know. And what good would a machine gun done, you know? It was the most useless thing in this world. It was nothing. Set up there, and of course the captain was right up there, or they could look out and see us all huddled up out there, you know. <laughs> but that's what they did. They put us right on top. So three months of that. And then, of course, after that, I got into the, the big gun. Well, tell us about the coffee thing. <laughs> oh, you mean carrying that? Oh, yeah, that was dangerous. <laughs> they did that to me, too. <laughs> and an 18-year-old kid, see, he said, hey, man, this, this and this guy. So he, they did, them the kind of guys who got all that kind of duty. So you had a coffee pot just about that big. It was steaming hot, you know, red hot, and it had rope on it to hold it with so you wouldn't burn yourself. Well, here you are, the ship going up there like this, up and down. You had to hold on anything you could find to keep from washing overboard. And then you had, just like this wall, just put things on there to climb that wall. That's how you had to climb up that ship to get around. And here you want to try to get on and climb this damn thing with this damn big heavy thing on the pocket, see? And that's what you had to do. And you was hanging on, and all of a sudden the ship would hit them big waves, and you look straight down in your drink. And when you look straight down, there was that ocean. If you lost your grip, you would have an ancient history. So that's what I did. I had to do that for a long time. All over that ship, carrying that thing around. And then when you take it and give them guys coffee, some of them would raise hell. Because it was all sweet. They put sugar in all of it. You had no choice. Well, some of them didn't like sugar. What the hell you got sugar in this for? I said, man, I ain't got nothing to do with it. I'm just carrying it around. You know, and I had to explain it. And it was bad. I mean, that thing was, that was no good deal when I first went on it. <laughs> it was a no good deal anyway you looked no, at it. sir. That was a bad, bad deal. <laughs> After I got on there, uh, you know, for a while, I, I finally learned, I mean, you don't do everything you do. And uh, a little bit later, the guy that was uh, there one day, he said, uh, this, my uh, guy in charge, he said, he said, Rice, he said, uh, I want you to go up there and paint, paint the radar at that. It was uh, right there in New York when it had been back, see, and I... I looked up there and oh, that thing looked like it was a mile high. And uh, I just, you know, kind of laughed. He said, what are you laughing at? I said, I wouldn't paint that for Franklin Delano Roosevelt. <laughs> and he said, why? He said, if you, if you refuse an order, I'll go get the commanding on. I said, I don't care who you get. Now, that's one time I decided I wasn't going to do it. Because I couldn't stand altitude like that. And so he did. He went all the way up and got the lieutenant. The lieutenant, he heard him come back, and I was still standing there. The lieutenant come back, and he said, where's Rice? I said, I am, sir. And he said, I understand you're uh, refusing to uh, obey an order. I said, well, the man told me to go up there and paint that radar up there. So I know I'm going to do it. He said, why? I said, because I can't stand out today. I said, back in the old days when I was home, 
the apple trees, the other kids would go climb the trees and shake them down, and I'd pick them up. I said, I wouldn't climb the tree. And he said, well, did you tell him that? He's, I said, no, sir. He said, why didn't you tell him? Because he didn't ask. Of course he didn't. <laughs> That's right. So he ate him out. I mean, this guy really tore him up right in front of everybody there. And uh, he said, don't you ever come out and get me again unless you really sure what you're getting me for. Because he said, this was wrong. He said, don't send him up there and get one little fella. Because see, I was big then as I am now. I weighed over 200 pounds. So after the guy went back, then he, he told me, he said, well, you take and take the ropes and pull the pans up and down with the some great big cans with the paint in it. And so didn't know anything about that either. I pulled the rope and the damn big can of paint was way up there and, I, and I, I got it caught on something up around the smokestack and spilled it. Oh, <laughs> no. The paint all oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> he could have killed me. He really could have. And, and of course, he, there wasn't nothing he was going to do about it then. You know, I told him I said, well, then I could. But I found out that I didn't have to do everything I was told. I mean, that one right there gave me a clue. You don't do everything you're told. And from then on, I didn't. I mean, I, I learned fast. Would you say that that is the case in this man's Navy today? I don't know. I didn't know how it would be today. I, I really don't know. I doubt if they got, you know, if they got the, the conditions that we have. I imagine, you know, like you said, they probably got air conditioning. Oh, we yeah. had nothing, you know, like yeah. that. And we ate horse meat, and all the bread had uh, would, would look like pepper, but it was bug, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, you couldn't pick all the bugs out, right? you wouldn't have no bread left, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Well, stuff like that. And back then days, nobody really questioned a whole lot. You did what you were told. But these kids today, I'm not quite sure they do. I don't think so. But uh, boy, that was, there was a lot of rough stuff.